Okay. Do you and want to do an introduction? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. No worries. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Mary Lewis Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, and this presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week on the same website where you registered. And so now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters and up first this evening will be Seton Hall University. Hi all, good evening. I hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining. Uh, what I'm going to do is share my screen with you all um, and we'll get this party started. Okay, so Seton Hall University. We are located in South Orange, New Jersey. Um, from you guys, maybe like a 45 minute drive. We are a 30 minute train ride from Penn Station in Manhattan. Um, I would like to say the university is located in a suburban or uh, urban area. You're not going to be in the middle of nowhere. Everything that you need is very, very close by, whether it's the bus, uh, public transportation, restaurants, movie theaters, you name it. We have an average class size of 21, which is typically like a high school class size. And we have a student to faculty ratio of 14 to one. We really value our students building close relationships with the staff and faculty that we have on our campus. We have seven colleges in total. We have 90 plus programs. Any type of program you can think of, we have, whether it is, um, biology, chemistry, psychology. We have also a lot of joint degree programs, whether that is PT, PA, OT, and athletic training. We also have a great joint MD program, and that is a four plus three program. What I can say with all of our academic programs is that we are really big on providing our students with a hands-on experience at Seton Hall. It's what we're most known for academically. Um, about 81% of our students have one or more internships during their time here with us. Um, we really don't want our students to be in the classroom. We want them to go out, learn, explore, explore, figure out what they like and what they don't like and really develop that professional network while they're at Seton Hall. So just a couple of numbers for you. 100% um, of our students who are majors in either business, education, um, communication, and the health sciences get job placements right after, uh, right after graduation. We have a 92% employment rate, and we're number four in the nation for providing internships for our students. This little graphic that you're looking at is a small fraction of where we have had students intern in the past. Student life. So that's one of my favorite things about the campus is the students. Um, our students have a great balance between working hard and playing hard. So they understand they're supposed to be there for a to get that college experience. And then they also know that they're supposed to go to class and um, participate in internships and so forth. We have 22 Greek organizations. Um, about 30% of our campus will participate in Greek life. And we always have something going on on our campus, whether it's some type of dance, carnivals. Um, I think just two weeks ago, we had Jason Derulo do a virtual concert. So our students are very involved in our campus life. Okay, the big question, how much is this all going to cost? So. Cost of attendance with tuition and fees, room and board, you're looking at approximately 61K. Now, I will say only 2% of our students pay that full price. I don't know where these 2% of students are. They are somewhere on our campus. But I will say that 98% of our students um, are is on some type of Seton Hall aid. So that's not counting money that you might get from the government or from your FAFSA. That's just counting Seton Hall money that we provide our students. We give over $100 million in grants and scholarship each year. We have something called a university scholarship, which is a merit-based scholarship, and that is automatically applied to our accepted students' accounts. The way that works is the higher your GPA is, the more money and scholarship you can receive. 
We also have a whole host of special scholarships that you can apply to on your own. Um, they're very wide ranging, whether they're talking about the pep band or the debate team, or if you have demonstrated um, a lot of community service in your neighborhood, we offer scholarships for that as well. One thing I cannot stress enough, with these special scholarships, they do have a deadline of January 15th. You are more than welcome to apply to these scholarships before you even receive a decision to Seton Hall. Um, so please make sure you keep that January 15th deadline in mind. So some important dates. We have two early action dates, November 15th and December 15th. We also have two regular decision dates, February 1st and March 1st. Now, these are some things that you need to submit with your application. One, of course, the application. It could be either the Seton Hall app or the Common app. There is an application fee, but I am your admissions counselor, so just reach out to me and we can give you a fee waiver code, so no worries. You need your essay, transcripts, a counselor report, and a teacher recommendation letter. We will be going test optional this year. So if you feel like your test scores are not a good reflection of who you are as a student, or you just have not had the chance to take your SAT or ACT, you could still be considered for admission. Um, if you're unsure whether you should submit your test scores or not, please use me as a resource. Um, I will definitely advise you on whether you should submit them with your application or just hold off and go with your transcripts. Now, to give you an idea of our averages, we're looking for students to have an average GPA of a 3.6, an SAT of a 12.35, and an average ACT of 27. We have some very high averages. So I like to tell students, if you're around that 81, 85 mark for your GPA, that's gonna make you a strong candidate for admission. Um, I know I just talked a lot about transcripts and test scores, but we really do a holistic review of the application. We really wanna know who you are as a student by looking at your essay, your recommendation letters. Um, so the, all of those things are really important. Another thing that's important with uh, our application process is something called demonstrated interest. We wanna know if students are interested in coming to Seton Hall. So attending things like this, um, we are ho hosting in-person tours on campus. If you ever wanna come visit us, we are also doing virtual tours. So what I will do is after I'm done speaking in the chat, I will put a link to a registration form where me, I can get your contact information and we can connect further and I can give you some more specific information about the institution. So that's about it. Very quick, easy, to the point. Um, I'm going to put the registration link in the chat. Please fill it out if you have any questions. Um, again, my name is Rachel Dorch. I'm going to be your admissions counselor. Um, I'm gonna help you out with the admissions process going forward. So I'm gonna be your point person for Seton Hall. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Going back to that demonstrated interest point that I made earlier, if you ever wanna do an interview, feel free to reach out to me. Um, they say interview, I say conversation. Um, it's just a good way for me to get to know you a little bit. Great, thank you, Rachel. Uh, our next presentation is from Skidmore College. Hey everyone, my name is Xavier McKenzie. I'm one of the assistant directors at Skidmore College. I'm also the coordinator for diversity initiatives. Um, to give you a little bit about Skidmore. So we are a small private liberal arts institution in Saratoga Springs, New York. It's about a three hour train ride on Amtrak. So it's about two or three episodes of Supernatural. Uh, we have about 2,600 students total, so not too big, not too small. Small enough that if you find a good group of friends, it's not hard to read them out from the rest, but large enough that if you get tired of them, hundreds of new students you can introduce yourself to. Uh, we have an 8 to 1 student faculty ratio, so the average class size is about 15 to 16 students, which means you aren't fighting for the attention of your professors. And the faculty-student relationship is something that we really like to highlight at Skidmore. So uh, they become second parents, best friends. The professors are there for not only academic support, but also social and emotional support. Uh, if you've ever seen Boy Meets World, everyone gets their own personal Feeney experience. If you've ever seen Mean Girls, I like to describe the professors as the Gretchen Wieners to the students Regina Georges. If both those references go over your head, I apologize for being so old, um, but just know that that friend that you have now that blows up your phone with text messages, calls, you're finding strange notes in your locker, a book bag, or even getting private messages on Zoom. That's pretty much how professors operate. So it's not rare to see a professor out to lunch with a student. 
In fact, faculty members will uh, invite entire classes to their homes where they'll have group discussions and uh, quite possibly a free meal. I don't know about uh, know anything about anyone here, but um, free food for me, you don't got to tell me twice. I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just there. So if you have that same habit, I think it's going to be a great environment for you. Uh, Skidmore does not agree with your comfort zone. We'll try to push you out of that as much as possible. There are over 60 majors and minors to choose from. You can also combine majors together to focus on something a little bit more specific. Uh, we have a common curriculum. We have a first year seminar. All of this is designed, again, to push you out of your comfort zone. To give you a personal experience, I went to college a neuroscience major. I was really uh, set on being the next cast member for Criminal Minds. Uh, obviously, we're not at a crime scene now. Uh, I realized quickly that the neuroscience courses did not match up to my dream of being a television star. So I went to complain to my academic advisor, had my quarter life crisis, ended up finding psychology instead, uh, while also finding studio arts, combined them both for art therapy, and ultimately uh, decided to work in higher education. So if that didn't make sense to you, it definitely didn't make sense to me. It's what a fair amount of our students will experience, but we offer a lot of guidance along the way. So we'll help you get along there. Uh, in terms of Saratoga Springs, I think that the campus is perfectly located. To the left of the campus is the North Woods. We've got 150 acres of explorable land, so you can hike, run the trails, you can camp out. In the winter, you can pick up skiing. Uh, I think it's important to note that we've lost no students of the North Woods. I'm just gonna knock on wood. Uh, so you don't have to worry about what happens during a full moon. Uh, we do have ghosts, however. They haunt a fair amount of our ambassadors, so do be, do be prepared. Um, to the right of the campus, either a two to three minute uh, drive or a 15 minute walk is the heart of Saratoga Springs. Uh, the best way I can describe it is New York City's Times Square minus the angry people and skyscrapers. Uh, you are allowed to make eye contact with other people. And you don't have to be suspicious of people who are too nice to you. So there is a very uh, decreased uh, uh, activity in terms of free mixtapes. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, but the city has over 150 restaurants. You have uh, shopping centers, you have Walmart and Target, you also have uh, a movie theater, uh, a bowling alley, and a state park. So there's always something to do in Saratoga Springs, uh, and I advise you to look it up after this session. Uh, in terms of the community, we have over 120 clubs and organizations. Uh, we have about 3,000 events annually, so there's always something happening on campus. Uh, we do not have Greek life. Our students really connect through these different clubs and organizations. I usually like to mention the quirkier ones you might not hear as often. For example, we have a Harry Potter Appreciation Club, and we also have a Quidditch team. Um, I can't assure you that you'll be able to fly, but if you want to run around with a broomstick and hit people, it's very cathartic. You don't have to worry about who you hit because there's a medic present during each of the games. And they get into a lot of heated debates with the Ultimate Frisbee team. So if you're about that life, by all means, feel free to join. Uh, we have the Knitwits for students who really love to knit. Uh, they're a great resource to extort, uh, especially during the winter. I mean, uh, use as a resource. Uh, we have a campus-wide week-long manhunt event known as Humans vs. Zombies, open to not only faculty, uh, but to students and staff as well. So if you're ever on campus and you find that our professors are being hunted down by Nerf guns, just assume that that's a normal occurrence on campus. Uh, we have uh, over 60% of our students who study abroad each uh, year. Uh, we have uh, 100 and 20 programs spread across six of the seven continents. Uh, unfortunately, we have no programs that lead to Antarctica, but if you want that experience, you could just spend the winter in Saratoga Springs. I promise you it's pretty much the same thing, so do dress warm. Uh, and we have, no matter what the situation, a student athlete, or maybe you don't wanna go away for too long, or maybe you're following the pre-med track, a lot of different programs set in place. Our career center is something I'd really like to mention. There are career development center, also titled the CDC, so don't get those confused. They interact with about 91% of the first year students to get you thinking about these internship and employment opportunities as early as possible. So overall, I think Skidmore is a great place to be. Uh, I'm always happy to answer your questions. That's what I'm here for. Uh, but thank you for coming to the session and I hope that you have a great rest of your night. Excellent, thank you so much Skidmore. And our next uh, presentation is from Long Island University. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight. My name is Margaret Morrell. I'm one of the freshman admissions counselors at Long Island University at our post campus. So I'm actually going to share my screen with all of you. And start from the beginning. Um, 
So to just talk a little bit about our Long Island University system, we actually have three different campuses associated with LIU. We have our LIU Brooklyn campus, which is actually located in the heart of downtown Brooklyn, right down the street from the Barclays Center. It's a 11 acre self-contained campus. That's really for the student who's looking for more of an urban feeling for their college experience. The middle picture is of our post campus. Our post campus is located in Brookville on Long Island. We have 330 acres. It's complete with an equestrian center, um, the only school with an equestrian center on Long Island. We also have practice fields for all of our outdoor sports. It's located about 18 miles outside of Manhattan and about eight minutes away from Long Island beaches. So you get the best of both worlds of being right in right near New York City um, and also being in a more of a suburban setting. Then we have our global campus, which is more of a non-traditional college experience. For this, you get to go abroad for your first three years of college, starting out in Costa Rica, then going over to Europe, then choosing between Australia and China for your third year, and you return to our Brooklyn campus for your fourth year um, to study global studies and complete an internship your second semester. So there's really something for everyone here at Long Island University, whether it's an urban setting you're looking for uh, or a more of a suburban setting or that global experience, we have all of that available to you. We have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio and our average class size is about 20 to 30 students per class. We think this is a really important part of your college experience because it allows you to get to know your professors and your professors to get to know you. I was actually talking to a professor the other day and she told me, you know, whenever I don't see a student in a class, I always email them to make sure they're okay after class. And I just think that's a really great story to tell because it shows that you're going to be known in the classroom. You are going to be seen. You're not just going to be another seat, another number in the classroom. You are going to be known for who you are and what you want to do in the future. In addition to your professors, you're also going to get to know the fellow students in your classes. And you're also going to be known by your promise coach. Your promise coach is um, your advisor throughout your four years, they also help you get involved on, on campus. They also run our housing on campus as well. So if you have any questions about campus life, getting involved on campus, or course registration or advising, your Promise Coach is that one-stop shop to answer all of those questions and to find that support here on campus. We have over 260 areas of study. Yes, you are reading that right. That is 260 areas of study. Um, we have everything from education to business. Our business school is actually, actually AACSB accredited, um, which is a distinction that only the top 10% of business schools in the country hold. We also have a great nursing program. We partner with Northwell Health to get our students in those classrooms, um, excuse me, outside the classrooms um, and in those hospital settings for those clinical rotations and internships as well. We also have a simulation lab on campus that has mannequins that actually breathe, sweat, talk, simulate birth. So they basically do everything humans do except they don't bleed. Um, so we like to let you practice in those simulation labs before those clinical rotations. We also have an amazing theater program um, with our location so close to New York City and Manhattan. Um, we really encourage our students in the theater program to go into New York City, take advantage of their area through workshops um, and auditions as well. Our musical theater program was actually ranked in the top 30 in the country. Um, so that's something we are very proud of um, here at LIU is that theater program. We are also a leader in engaged learning. Basically what this engaged learning means is we ask our students to take what they learn inside the classroom and apply it to the world around them. One of the ways we accomplish this here at LIU is through our student run businesses on campus. We have Browse, which is pictured right there on the screen. Um, Browse is our Apple certified store on campus. It's the only one of its kind on a college campus in the country and they sell actual Apple products. As you can see there, they have desktops, laptops, anything you could need that's a computer need, they have that right in there. 
We also have our student body boutique, which is where a lot of our fashion merchandising majors work. They actually go into New York City and choose the clothing that's sold in that store, and then they donate part of their proceeds to student scholarships. We also have a consulting firm on campus. It's called LIUIQ. With this, we work with outside companies in order to help them solve a problem. So our students are able to work with those actual companies um, to solve a problem for them, and then they get to go and visit that, um, that company at their headquarters. We also have a Shark Nation store, which is where you can get all your, uh, all your student swag. So with these student-run businesses, um, the students do all the marketing, all the hiring for the business, and actually get to run their own business. 90% of LIU postgrads find a job within their chosen field within six months of graduation. I think that's a great statistic. And we also have a vibrant student life with over 70 clubs and activities. We have everything from Greek life on campus to a squirrel watching club. Um, and you can start your own club on campus with the help of 10 friends and your promise coach. Um, in terms of next steps, we do accept the common application as well as the quick application on our website. If you'd like a fee waiver code, I can absolutely provide that to you. We actually have rolling admission, um, so you can apply at any time. Um, we are also doing on-campus tours as well as virtual tours. I will also put um, a, a inquiry link in the in the chat here. So if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me and fill out that link to get any further information. I'll stop sharing my screen here. Excellent. Thank you so much. And our next presentation is from Malloy College. Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle. I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor at Malloy College, which is a medium sized liberal arts college located in Rockville Center, New York, uh, which has access to Long Island's famous beaches and parks, as well as close proximity to Manhattan. And so you really do get the most of best of, best of both worlds there. I'm going to sh share my screen really quick and let's get started. So, Malloy College is a medium-sized college. We have about 5,000 students, and something we take great pride in here at Malloy is our student-to-faculty ratio of 10 to 1. We are um, really focused on that experience of students really being able to bond with their professors and their professors not only act as mentors for them throughout their time in college, you know, you can ask them questions not only about what am I going to do, what am I going to, what classes I'm going to take next semester, what classes do I need to take to graduate, but also what is the field looking like, what should I expect when I graduate, what kind of internships or job opportunities should I take advantage of now so that I can be competitive once I graduate. Uh, I think these are what really makes Malloy stand out is this community and these supportive faculty and staff that really help guide our students towards success. So Malloy is large enough that we offer, you know, academically challenging and um, high quality educational experiences, but we are also focused on that personalized attention. And Malloy offers or over 50 undergraduate programs uh, with these small class sizes, anything from criminal justice to nursing to the allied health sciences, which includes respiratory care, nuclear medicine technology. We have wonderful uh, arts programs. We have a theater program. So really anything under the sun. Um, and all of our classes are taught by faculty that are very well qualified. We have freshman learning communities, we have an honors program, we have programs for students who wanna to go to medical school, who wanna to go to PA school, apply for PT school or OT school after they graduate. So those pre-professional programs really help students to ensure they're taking the courses that they need in order to apply to those programs after they graduate. And um, we also have a great career center that helps our students to secure internships and jobs. And we have among the highest graduation rates on Long Island. So here's a list of our majors here at Malloy. 
and um, over 77% of our full-time faculty have doctoral degrees. And so our, our faculty are very used to being approachable and welcoming to students because we do have that smaller class size. So you will never be stuck in a lecture hall here at Malloy. Your professors will know your name. They will understand your strengths and your weaknesses and they will help you to be the best that you can be as both a student and you know a future contributor to society we have academic advising we have tutoring service writing center and we also provide support for students um, with special needs and advising uh, for students that are first gen disabled or um, low income we have three residence halls on campus, so you can live on campus at Malloy, but our students are very involved, whether they're commuters or living on campus, in that um, we have over 70, 17 varsity sports, we have club sports, we even have esports. So if you're interested in um, playing competitively for Fortnite or League of Legends, we do have teams for those and you could actually get scholarship money for that. Uh, we have over 60 student clubs and activities on campus and I would say our students are extremely involved, uh, whether it be through student government involved in uh, sports or athletics, as well as maybe the more academically based clubs and activities. We have really wonderful on-campus events. There's really always something going on and um, also a great focus on community service here at Malloy. So in order to apply, we accept the Malloy application uh, or the common application. Either one works for us. We also uh, look for a personal essay and your final high school transcript. For those seniors applying for fall of 2021, we are uh, SAT and ACT optional. So you're always welcome to send those in if you do have them. And we are rolling admission. So we don't actually have any specific deadlines, uh, which I think is a great plus because you tend to hear back uh, rather soon. And uh, we do have a lot of scholarship opportunities for students, whether it be based on academic scholarship or based on affinity scholarships. So we do have scholarships you could apply for, which includes our community service scholarship. If you're a student who's really involved in community service and giving back, or if you are a student who maybe started their own club or is in student government or captain of a team, uh, you could apply for our leadership scholarship and get money for that. And uh, our overall tuition is 31,000 per year, but um, that's our sticker price. About 92% of our incoming freshmen receive some form of financial aid. And so, I would say if you have any questions, I will put my contact information in the chat and I'd be happy to chat with you more about, you know, ways to get involved when it comes to Malloy. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Excellent. Thank you so much. And our next presentation is from Five Towns College. Let me just try to share my screen <laughs> and let's see if that works. Can everybody say? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So hold on one second. We did it before and it worked. Can we see now? Nope. We're still seeing you. Okay. Let me just check this. You know what? My actual, it just went out before. So let me just check again. It's not, for some reason, it is not letting me, and it did it before when it did the check. So that's. Do you see the, the, the share screen option on the bottom yeah, of the? Of course, and I'm, I'm clicking it. But I don't know. All right, let me see if I just try this. All right, and we still can't see it. And I tried it right before and we 
it worked. Yeah, we're still not seeing um, anything that you're sharing. All right, so do you want me to just, you know, talk about five towns? I mean, I don't want to hold everybody up. Yeah, no, you you're, you still have your time. So if you want to just talk through it, that yeah. would be great. Okay, so anyway, my name is Danielle DiTomaso. I'm, I apologize that you cannot see me, <laughs> but I am from Five Towns. As you know, Five Towns is a performing arts school, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we do performing arts. We do have business as well, um, but you know, we are basically mass communications, theater, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, and we also have, you know, like I said, theater, we have acting, but we also have film and video. Um, so if you are a student or you do have students that is interested in the arts, this is definitely a college that they do want to look for. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of our students, like I said, are, you know, into the arts and things of that nature. You know, it's very easy to apply. You just want to go on to ftc.edu, you know, hover over the admissions, and that's how you can see that you apply. There is no application fee, okay? You know, we do obviously require that, you know, you attach a personal statement as well as with your application, but you can also, your transcripts as well, um, and a letter of recommendation. Okay, and that would need to be from either, you know, a college counselor or a teacher, because we just really want to make sure that it's somebody that's involved in the school requirement. Okay. You know, there are different as far as film and video and, um, you know, graphic design, things of that nature, you would need to provide a portfolio. But with theater um, and music, you would need to do an audition. So, you know, things obviously are very, very different this year, you know, because of COVID. So they do require an audition still, but you may do it in video platform. So you wouldn't necessarily require to go to the school, but you would have to submit videos you know that's very important as far as SATs we do not require them but if you do feel that that would benefit you we absolutely suggest you know that you submit them as well so you would need like I said the application you would need the portfolio or <clears throat> the audition you would also need a letter of recommendation from a high school counselor or you know a teacher as well. Um, and then, you know, you do want to make sure that you get everything in early as far as the early action, because we do have the scholarship. That's the early action scholarship. And that has a deadline of March 1st. So as long as you have all of those things submitted by March 1st, we would look at that. And obviously, you know, just as long as you are doing your FAFSA form, which of course, you know, is, you know, the financial aid to see, you know, what you require as far as uh, loans or, you know, grants, things of that nature. So you definitely want to go into financial aid. Financial aid will work with you, you know, regarding those things, especially. You know, we are a very small, small school. So, you can absolutely reach out to us at any point in time. You know, we do have an open house on um, the 18th of March. Of course, it is virtual. And we do have information sessions coming up. So you definitely want to go on to www.ftc.edu to get all the information session scheduled as well as the open house. We can assist you. It's not a problem. You can call us at any time. Um, we do have residence halls, which are amazing. So if that's something that you are interested in, the residence halls, you definitely want to submit your application, you know, sooner versus then later, 
because they are, you know, there's not a lot of them. We do have four buildings, but there are only two students at most to each to each room. So um, that's definitely something you want to, you know, make sure you do sooner versus later. You know, we are available. We, you know, whether you want to speak to us, admissions, whether you want to speak to academics, we're a very small school. You can speak as far as, you know, to the business department chair, whether it's the music department chair, whether it's the, you know, mass communication department chair, you know, hopefully soon we will be having those visits, but now we can do it virtually. You can definitely see that we have, you know, the radio station, which is, you know, amazing. It's beautiful, but we also have other things as well, as far as the theater, as far as Great. The green Th rooms. Thank you so much for, for that presentation. We're, uh, we're actually at a time and uh, time to move on to our next presenter uh, when our final one of this session is St. Joseph's College uh, in New York. And we'll let you take it away. Thank you. All right. Um, so good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sticking around this long. I promise I will keep it brief. Uh, my name is Sam Garofalo. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at St. Joseph's College, Brooklyn. We do have a sister campus in Long Island in Patchogue, but the campuses are separate. So if you're interested in Long Island, you will need to apply to the Long Island campus. I'm speaking on behalf of the Brooklyn campus. So most of the information is the same, but I just wanted to clarify in case anyone was interested in the other or in both campuses. So we are a small private liberal arts college located in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. We've got about a thousand undergraduate students, student to faculty ratio 10 to one, average class size about 14. So no lecture halls, anything like that. Classes are going to be very small, maximum of about maybe 25. And your professors will certainly get to know you as individuals. You're not just gonna be another face in the crowd or another number um, on someone's roll sheet. Um, some popular majors include nursing, biology, business administration, criminal justice, psychology, child study, which is early childhood and childhood education, as well as adolescent education, which is grades 7 to 12. Um, I didn't mention Clinton Hill is about like a 15 minute walk from where the Barclays Center is, so we are in downtown Brooklyn. Um, we are test optional this year and we have decided we are officially going test optional for next year as well, so that is confirmed. Um, I will say if you do want to submit test scores or if you're thinking about submitting test scores, historically a 980 on the SAT or above has been admissible for um, being accepted to St. Joseph's College. So if you have below that, I would recommend not submitting test scores. If you have higher than that, it shouldn't really make a difference whether or not you submit them. So it's up to you. If you feel like you have a good score that represents you, you're more than welcome to submit it. If you feel like it may not represent you because you maybe only were able to take it one time, something like that. Don't feel any pressure to submit it. Most of our students this year actually did apply test optional. So we've implemented a few new procedures on our end to make sure that everyone is being reviewed fairly. Um, we are an, a, rolling app, a rolling admissions school. So your applications will be reviewed as they're submitted pretty much. Um, you can apply either on the Common App, which is what most students do, since if you're applying to one school on there, it just makes sense to you know, tick another box and add another school. Um, or you can apply directly on our website, sjcny.edu. Completely up to you. We have no preference. It's honestly just whatever is easiest for you guys. We are offering merit-based scholarships, as we always have, between ten dollars and $27,000 per year. Our annual tuition is $28,590. That was frozen from last year, um, or I guess last year's was frozen for this year because of COVID. Um, I'm not sure what's happening next year. If anything, it will go up a few percent. So it still probably won't exceed 30,000, but I don't have exact figures on that yet. But if you keep in touch with us, obviously we'll let you know if anything changes. I'll put my contact info in the chat once I'm done speaking. Um, as graduates from Mary Lewis, we do offer a CSJ grant, which is $3,000. So you'll receive that on top of any merit-based scholarships you may qualify for up to the full cost of tuition. So if you do qualify for that top tier 27,000 presidential scholarship, it'll go up to the full cost of tuition, whatever that happens to be next year. Um, for that presidential, we require at least a 96 on weighted average for test optional students and a 94 with a 1270 SAT or 27 ACT if you're applying with test scores. So as you can see, like I said, 
applying with or without test scores, you're generally looking, we're looking for about the same thing either way, test scores or not, your test scores can boost for your GPA or vice versa. Um, required materials, the standard, standard, your essay, at least one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a counselor. Um, I can provide a fee waiver if anyone needs that, just shoot me an email. Like I said, I'll put my contact info in the chat. Um, and we are asking um, or offering, I should say, an optional essay this year as well. So there's a couple of questions, generally just answering why you think you would be a good fit for St. Joseph's College or what you think you could contribute to our community um, or why you really want to attend St. Joseph's College, 250 words max, so nothing crazy, but it'll just give you that little extra boost to show that you're interested in St. Joe's. So that's definitely something that can benefit your application if you decide to apply um, for next year. Um, in terms of student life, we have over 30 different clubs and organizations. So we've got pretty much everything um, from academics to multicultural student clubs to creative and performing arts. You name it, we probably have some variant of it. If not, we have a very, very active student body and we create clubs constantly. It's on a constant rotation depending on what people are interested in from year to year. So if you have an interest that isn't already represented by a club, you can certainly create a club with a, just a few more students who are interested in the same topic. Um, finally, we do offer housing. However, it is off campus. So we're located in Clinton Hill, as I mentioned, which is the historical district between Bed-Stuy and Fort Greene. Our housing is located in Brooklyn Heights, which is down closer by the Brooklyn Bridge in what used to be the St. George Hotel. It's now a building that's owned by a company called Educational Housing Services. There's actually a few different colleges who reside with, within that building. You would be living with another St. Joseph's College student if you choose to dorm. We have doubles and triples, um, and we have a campus shuttle that runs between the dorms and our campus. So if you decided to dorm, it would be off campus. Most of our students are um, commuters because most of our students are from the city, mostly Queens and Brooklyn. So you would definitely fit in with our student body being from uh, Queens High School, um, but it's really up to you. You don't have to be from out of state to live in the dorms. If you want that full college experience, including dorm life, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And like I said, I'll put my info in the chat. And if you have any questions, just feel free to email me. I am the Queen's representative. So I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our presenters this evening. Um, we are just about out of time, but if there's any last uh, questions for our presenters, please do put those in the Q and A um, and they, will, uh, they can answer them or uh, get them sent to them afterwards. But, um, as we are wrapping up this session, um, just a few reminders um, before we conclude. Um, when this session is over, there'll be a quick survey that does pop up and we do value your feedback. Um, and a recording from this session will be available uh, about a week from now on the same website where you registered. So uh, once again, I wanna thank our uh, college and university representatives and I wanna thank our attendees for attending this session. Uh, and that does conclude our session uh, for the evening. So thank you very much uh, to everyone and good night. <laughs>